if your relative is moving mad or you suspect that they will move mad when they get to Canada, you can withdraw your sponsorship application at any time before they become a permanent resident. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about relatives sponsorship. I'm sure a lot of people abroad, let me rephrase. I'm sure a lot of people in Canada, since this is where I am and since I'm making a video about here, as one sibling or cousin or extended family, is upset that we have not brought them abroad. On behalf of all of us, we are sorry. It is not easy to bring family members. Please forgive us. <laughs> the irony is one can bring his or her parents. And when the parents get the PR, only then can they sponsor their kids, which are your siblings. Anyway, that's not why we are here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what it entails to sponsor relatives. So I'm going to be reviewing five to six points, so please pay attention. This video was made from a post that IRCC has on their website. I copied it all out, simplified it, crammed it, wrote it out, and here I am telling you guys. So don't think it's a fake information. I'll put the link in the description. Click on it and you see that word for word I'm saying what is there, right? So I'm basically saying what IRCC has said, just adding my twist and not everybody, because not everybody knows how to navigate to websites and not everybody has patience to read. Every, a lot of people have low attention span, but since it's a video, you can just put it on and listen as you do other things. Anyway, let's get right into today's video. I'm going to be talking about the process, who can sponsor, who you can sponsor, how to apply, after you apply, and the sixth thing is preparing for your arrival in Canada. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the process. You may be eligible to um, sponsor some certain relatives if you are 18 years and above, or you're a Canada um, citizen or PR. If you want to sponsor a relative to come to Canada as a PR, you must be able to support them financially when they arrive. So you must be able to meet their basic needs and yourself, you know, such as food, clothing, and shelter. Not that you claim that you're broke when they come and you now ask for social support. Don't forget you already showed your bank statement, you showed your pay stub and all your documentation. So you need to ensure that your relative doesn't need social assistance, which is also called government assistance, when they come in. I hope it is clear. Yeah. Just have money before you can sponsor somebody. Have money. <laughs> so now let's talk about the fees and how much you need to pay for different people in your family. To sponsor a child, you will need $170. And to sponsor an adult 22 years or older, you need to spend $1,200. Five dollars. Then let's just talk about the processing time. The processing time varies by country, um, but I'll give you the one for Nigeria. The processing time for parents in Nigeria is 24 months. For spouse outside of Canada is 12 months, which was what I was. For spouse inside Canada is 10 months, and a dependent child is 13 months. Then for adopted kids or other relatives, there's no data for this yet, so I don't know why. But I guess it's because there's going to be a lot of verification to be done to ensure that you're not kidnapping someone's child and claiming it's yours. Anyway, we're done with the first point, which is the process. Now let's go to the second point, which is who can actually sponsor someone. This is basically for persons with PR and citizenship status, right? So the second point is who can sponsor. You can sponsor certain relatives if you're 18 and above and you're a Canada citizen or PR. You need to be living in Canada to be eligible to sponsor some kind of relatives unless you are a Canadian who lives abroad and plan to return when your relative immigrates and you're sponsoring your spouse, your common law, your conjugal partner, your dependent children who have no dependent children. You must definitely need to return to Canada to sponsor anybody. And if you live in Quebec, you must also meet Quebec's conditions to be a sponsor after you've been approved as a sponsor. This includes signing an undertaking with the province. This undertaking is a contract that binds your sponsorship. Also, you will need to definitely have some responsibilities as a sponsor. So when you sponsor a relative to become a PR of Canada, you must meet the income guidelines. That was what we were talking about earlier, money. Also, agree in writing to financially support your relative and other eligible, eligible um, relatives coming with them if they have kids, right? Finance is very important, you know, so please take note. And this... Um, support begins the day they become PR until 20 years, depending on their age and how you are related. So think about this before you sponsor anybody. In case you are bringing a tough person that can put you in trouble. Yes, they might get jobs and all that good stuff. But you are responsible for them both in the good and bad times. 
So if they do good, you're responsible for it. They'll give you thumbs up. If you do bad, yeah, you're also responsible for it. So that's why there needs to be a signed agreement that they'll support them themselves and you support them. And not that they will not come and be eating your food and be causing trouble. They will need to get jobs or go to school or do something to better themselves. And this also includes sponsored dependent children 18 years or older. Dependent children 19 years or younger do not need to sign an agreement. So now that I've talked about who can sponsor, let's talk about who is ineligible to sponsor. You may not be eligible to sponsor a relative. If you are in prison, you cannot sponsor anybody, or you've not paid your child support payments, even that own child support, or you've declared bankruptcy, or you have not and you have not been released from your bankruptcy, or you have um, or you get social assistance from the government, or assess people that are disabled anyway, or you didn't pay back an immigration loan, or you didn't pay back your student loan, or you've made late payments, or you missed payments, or you sponsored somebody in the past and you're not eligible to sponsor, or you were convicted of a crime, or you are a sex offender, you are just an offender, you know, against sexual, your, your relative, someone has reported you for a type of offense, sha, or how long ago was this offense, whether, whether there was a record of um, suspension, you know, many other, you know, offenses that I can't think of my head now. So your family member that you think is supposed to sponsor you is not talking about it. Please don't be angry. Most of them don't have money. Like us. <laughs> or they have been to prison. I've not been to prison. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next point, which is number three. Then it is who can you sponsor? You can only sponsor relatives like a brother, a sister, aunt, uncle in very specific situations. Please and please, my people are my people are my aunt and my uncle. This is not I don't have money to sponsor, please. Anyway, there are criteria to be met before you can sponsor family members, and some can sound very brutal. Depending on your situation, there are two options for who you can sponsor. You can sponsor an orphan brother, sister, nephew, niece, grandchild, only if they meet these conditions. The first one is they are related to you by blood or adoption. Both their mother and father have passed away. You understand what I said? Both parents must have passed away, meaning that your sibling, God forbid, you can't sponsor your sibling unless your parents have passed. Yeah. The other part is that you can sponsor your brother and his wife or your sister and her husband. They must be dead before you can sponsor your niece and nephew. If you understand, you can EM is very brutal, right? So then they must be 18 years of age and they must not be married or have a common law partner or something. Basically, you can't sponsor your brother, your sister, your nephew, your niece, your grandchild, your grand anything. If one of your parents is still alive, or maybe no one knows one of the, when one of the parents are, or the parents abandoned them, or someone else other than their parents taking care of them, or why they are, why, why one of their parents is alive. If your parents are alive, you cannot be sponsored. If your parents is in jail, you cannot be sponsored. You understand? So, and you can also sponsor someone that is not admissible into Canada, which means they are not allowed to come. There are people like that. There's this story for another day. You can just read up, please. <laughs> anyway, the fourth point is how to apply. Yeah. So there are two stages in this how to apply process. The first one is apply to sponsor and steps for the sponsored person. So for apply to sponsor, you need a document checklist. Yeah. I'll see if I will put a link. I'll see if I can put a link in the description box so you can just see a little picture here. Use the checklist to make sure that you include all the forms and documents you need. Upload the checklist with your online application. Your visa officer may also require for additional documents, as they usually do, right? So choose a visa office that serves your area. I know people like to choose places that seem like the grant visas, but choose the one closest to you. In case they need an additional document, you can send it. If you're not sure which one to choose, there's a list that illustrates this. I'll put a link. There's a lot of links that I need to give you guys. So check it to see a list of countries and which offices serve them. One important message I saw while researching is that you and the person that you're sponsoring must sign digitally the applications. But if they're under 18, you might, of course, sign on their behalf. So the second stage is for the sponsored person. If they're under 18, their guidance or you can apply on their behalf. You need to sign in or create a PR online application portal for them. I'll put a link again. I hope I remember all these links. You need to fill out some digital forms online, which are the generic application form for Canada, Schedule A, which is the background slash um, declaration, um, and additional family information to show this, you know. So whoever fills this form, we also need to upload the sponsors completed and signed forms. So in this case, if you want to use an immigration representative, you can, right? Just ensure that you have all the information that he or she feels behind you because the amount of people that immigration consultants have scammed in. Anyway, you need passport, passport photographs and there's a specification for the size. 
you need one for each of the person on your application follow the instructions in the online application to scan and upload both sides of the photo you need to get your fingerprints and you know taken if you are between 14 and 79 all biometric fees must be paid when application is submitted otherwise your um you may experience delay you need to get this done as soon as you get a data from IRCC that tells you to give your biometrics and you have 30 days to do this from the date of the letter so before you submit make sure you cross check everything from answering all the questions to electronically signing your application to paying your processing um, fees to uploading your supporting documents you know just everything anyway i'm coming to the end of this video like this so <laughs> the next point is after you apply what happens after you apply the application assessment process has begun right so i have to say we review your sponsorship application return it to you if it is incomplete or the sponsorship processing money are missing you'll be sent an aor acknowledgement of receipt with an application number your eligibility to the, to be assessed and both the person that you are trying to sponsor your eligibility will be assessed to be sure if you are eligible for pr if i actually um, reject you your 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 the person can still you know uh, com continue to apply but they might not give you guys you know so if you have if you have refused if your if you're accepted as a sponsor irc will review your documents and if their pr is still refused they'll let you know what it is and how to appeal another thing is withdrawing your sponsorship application if your relative is moving mad or you suspect that they will move mad when they get here you can withdraw your sponsorship application at any time before they become a permanent resident you may be able to get a refund if IRCC has not started processing your application yeah so the last point is preparing for your arrival when you arrive in canada there you must show your copr confirmation of pr and your permanent resident visa to the ircc um, official at the port of entry so they will check all your documents to see if it's not fraudulent they will also need to check your if your visa has not expired the expiry date is always shown on the visa and you cannot extend you know you cannot use, you cannot use the visa when it's expired and your visa cannot be extended yeah so make sure that you use it within the time limits you must also bring um, a valid passport from your country with you of course everybody will take that but it must be the regular and private passports and not the government or diplomatic or public service or public affair passports. You also need to answer some questions at the port of entry, the questions that are on your application, just for the officer to verify that the information on your application is correct. And that's why I said if you use an agent, ensure you know the information that the guy puts on your application profile. You must inform IRCC officer if you are bringing any money or checks or whatever into your gold into canada so if there's a problem at the port of entry when you arrive your your pr will be authorized right there and there the officer will also use the address of your copr to have your pr card mailed to you make sure you are, your address is correct so if you are the person that your address that you use if you are false please go and beg the first day. <laughs> because your card will be mailed to the canadian address after you arrived you arrived in canada as a pr so I know this sounds complicated and I know it's it's actually a lot, but it's not. You can rewatch it, understand it, ask me questions if you are lost. Like I said, I actually got this from IRCC website and I just added my own twist so that you can feel free to check out yourself and understand it for yourself. Mal don't they pay me. So you can let me know what kind of immigration videos you guys want to see. Um thank you guys for watching and um I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>